everyone. I hope you're having a fantastic holiday season so far. I thought that it would be fun to do a little gift guide for Regency fans. Um, things that you might have been given if you lived in the Regency era. Things that you can put on your Christmas wish list if you love Regency or things that you could give to your Regency loving friends. Most of these things that I am showing you today are um, from small businesses that make a living recreating things from that time period. So first off is one of my favorite online stores and that is LBCC Historical. They make a bunch of beauty supplies and makeup from a lot of different time periods. I think I've seen stuff from the 1700s all the way through the early 1900s. And I love that she goes back to original recipes and bases her recipes off of those things that she finds. Now, sometimes she does tweak them a little bit so we're not getting lead in our makeup or uh, things like that that we know are bad for you. But she uses very natural ingredients so it's also really good for your skin. One of my favorite things from her shop is this Turkish Rouge. And I actually have, almost all of my makeup today is from this shop. I have it on um, my cheeks today. And this is stuff that I use when I'm not dressing up. I love it just for every day, just to give a little bit of color to my lips or, and cheeks. Um, so that's definitely something that you can use on a regular basis, not just for reenacting. I also love this uh, cream of roses and it's just uh, like a facial cream and it makes your skin so soft. My skin loves this. I also have um, coal. So th they would use this as kind of an early mascara and um, this red lip pomatum is what I have on my lips. It's a really pretty color. If you don't think that you will use rouge on a daily basis, she also sells samples, which are really nice. This, I believe, is the Turkish rouge, um, but in a liquid form, and it's just in this little sample bottle, and so perfect for like a little stocking stuffer, or if you just want to try it to see how it looks. She's also got these like scented hair pomatum. And this is really nice. It's um, a lip pomade. And this one is actually based off of a recipe from Martha Lloyd, who um, was Jane Austen's, one of her best friends who lived with them for a long time and eventually married Jane Austen's brother. She's based this one off of an original recipe that Jane Austen might've used. She also has this Milk of Roses, which is really soothing to your skin, and um, this Orange Blossom water, which you kind of spray on before you put on your makeup. And the last thing I have from her shop, from LVCC Historical, uh, is this Silk Fan. She's got it in several colors, and they're super cute. They're very basic, but they will go with a lot of your Regency attire. So if you are wanting to try some historical products, I highly recommend checking out LBCC Historical. Jewelry has always been a super popular gift to give. And I don't have a ton of Regency jewelry, but there are several shops that have gorgeous, gorgeous uh, reproduction jewelry. These ones are very simple. Um, I'm pretty sure that they're from Dom de la Mode. I bought them secondhand, so I'm not positive, but um, Dom de la Mode and Lady Detali and In the Long Run Designs have very similar things. Um, pearls were super common. Coral jewelry was super common. Um, and they also, in their shops, have um, gemstones or like paste gems. A lot of them are based off of either real jewelry that we have 
in museums or they also some of them will base their jewelry off of paintings which I think is super cool and it's it's really fun to see the painting right next to this jewelry that they've recreated. While we are on the subject of Dom's Olive Mode, uh, I have these um, gaming tiles. They would have been called fish and a lot of them were made out of mother of pearl and um, a lot of them were actually shaped like fish, hence the name. And they would use these um, in their gambling and um, everybody would have their own so that you could keep track of who owed who money. If you are a lady who likes to frequent the card tables or you are buying for a lady who likes to frequent the card tables, I also recommend, this is from um, McGregor Historic Games. This is a reproduction 18th century deck of playing cards. And these have actually been used in several shows and movies. One thing that I find interesting is they usually didn't have anything on the back. It was usually just the front um, that had the face on it. And they also did not put numbers. They just put um, the suit symbols and you had to keep track of how many it was. A lot of cards, if you're getting them from Great Britain, um, would come with a stamp um, to show that they had been taxed. Um, but these ones don't, they only have one card. That's the one card that has the stamp on it and then the rest of them don't. Um, so that they can be used um, for a lot of different types of reenacting. You can use these from like 1700s, maybe even earlier through the 1900s. Um, one thing to note, these cards, um, because they are historic reproductions, they don't have the wax on them that we are used to in modern card making. Um, the wax or the plastic, and so they're a little bit hard to shuffle. <laughs> they have gorgeous artwork on them. Here's the Queen of Diamonds. Show you. So these are super fun. Grab a set and a set of fish and then you can have a little Regency whist party. During the Regency era, it was fairly common to give gifts at Christmas, but it wasn't necessarily expected. It wasn't as big as it became um, during the Victorian era and later. Um, most of the gifts would be like handmade and they would be practical. Um, and a lot of the gift giving was, um, which you see a lot in Regency romance, was the landowners giving stuff to their tenants. One very practical gift would be gloves because gloves were worn all the time. Um, if you stepped out of your house, you should have a pair of gloves. And for these, I don't have um, a particular shop that I get my gloves from. I just scour Etsy and I look for like 1950s, 1960s gloves. Um, if you can afford and can find leather gloves, um, those are probably going to be the closest to what they had in the Regency. Um, Regency also, I mean, they had silk gloves and um, a couple other materials, but as far as modern gloves that you're trying to pass off as Regency, um, leather is going to be the closest. Um, I would try to avoid the synthetic um, satin gloves. They just look, they can look super, super cheap. Um, my favorite is either you can find, sometimes find cotton gloves or nylon gloves um, and they just don't have that kind of cheap sheen to them that the synthetic satin does. But I just look for um, either short gloves or if I get the long ones. Um, the long ones are funny because in the Regency era they actually had pretty loose gloves and most of the gloves, the long gloves that you can find these days are going to be more tight fitting. 
Um, but if you get the tight fitting gloves, you can kind of bunch them down to create a look of it being loose. Um, one thing to note with gloves, a lot of the gloves that are sold are very small. So check the size of the gloves and measure your hand to make sure that you can get, you can actually wear the pair that you get. Um, I have fairly small hands and I have bought gloves that I couldn't get my hands into. So double check the size with the seller. Another very practical gift that you might have gotten during the Regency is stockings. These stockings are from American Duchess. If you have the funds in your Christmas budget, they have gorgeous reproduction shoes from a bunch of different eras. Um, that is something that I would like to invest in eventually. But for now, I'm really enjoying these silk stockings from American Duchess. They are clocked stockings. They have the decoration that goes up the side and that was very common during the Georgian era and the later part of it, the Regency era. And these, these silk stockings are very thin and so they don't make you super hot and they're just a great little touch to bring your Regency costume up another level. If you have a foodie that you are buying for on your list, I highly recommend this American Heritage Chocolate. This is a drinking cocoa. And the cool thing about this company is that they base their recipe off of an 18th century recipe. So this isn't your run of the mill hot cocoa mix. Um, it has a really great chocolate flavor, but it also has other spices in it. Um, this one has cinnamon and anise and nutmeg, a um, couple other flavors, pep red pepper, a little tiny bit of red pepper, but don't worry, it's not, it's not super spicy. Um, it just warms it up a little bit. And this is so good. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, this is what I was drinking the other day. Um, it's it's different, but I think you'll really like it, um, especially if you like to try historic foods. Now, if you do not have a Regency costume and would like to get into Regency reenacting, I highly recommend, sorry, this isn't a great visual because it's just the instruction sheet, but I highly recommend the Sense and Sensibility Regency patterns. Um, you do need to have a certain level of sewing skills, but I one thing that I love about these patterns, and, and I have made all of my Regency dresses according to these patterns or based off of these patterns. Um, one thing that I love is that she includes really detailed illustrations and um, really great instructions for making these. She has a ton of like, guidelines and where she got these um, patterns, the extant pieces that she based them on. And I just love this seller. She's so nice and she will help you if you are having any issues with the pattern. Um, she's really responsive and she loves to see the things that People make from her patterns. This is probably one of the easiest Regency patterns that I've come across. So if you want to make a Regency dress or know someone who wants to make a Regency dress or know somebody who wants to make a Regency dress for you, um, I highly recommend this. And the nice thing about this is it's a PDF pattern and so you can print it out as many times as you need to. You don't have to worry about not being able to use it for different sizes like traditional patterns and if you lose a piece you can just print it out again so i've had a really great experience using these patterns i would recommend starting with the stays and shift pattern and then going with one of the dresses um, because these are going to fit a lot better if you have the foundations under the clothes one thing that is always fun with Regency dresses are the accessories. And 
you can get some pretty great accessories um, just on Amazon. Um, Pashmina scarves are easy to find and they can add a fun splash of color if you're wearing a white dress like I am, um, or just bring a little difference to your look um, without too much effort. One place that sells gorgeous scarves that you can use for this is Burnley and Trowbridge. And I do not actually have a scarf from them. I will show a picture right here of their scarves, um, but it's on my Christmas list. <laughs> These are great because they can be used by men for like a cravat or they can be used um, for women as a fichu um, over the top of your dress or under the dress and just poking out through the neckline. Now we're shifting slightly more modern and I want to show you a new journal that I have available through Regency Journals by Arlem. And these journals are based off of the characters from the Promise of Forever After series that was just released this fall by Love Letter Press. So we have a Phoebe journal, we have a Daphne journal, we have Isabel, Mara, and Lavinia. These are just fun little journals. They're very basic, um, but these make great stocking stuffers. You can find these on Amazon. Last, I have two books to share with you. One of them is my Christmas novella. This is a retelling of the gingerbread man set in the Regency era. And I had so much fun writing this and pulling in little details from the original story. This also fits fantastically in a stocking and it's a really short read that's perfect for after you open presents and have your big Christmas breakfast and you're ready to snuggle up with a good book by the fire. The last thing I'm going to show you is a very modern book, but it is adorable and I thought that it was so fun. The poem that we know as The Night Before Christmas was first published in 1823, so in that extended Regency era. And that poem is where we really got our modern idea of Santa Claus. Um, it's where we got the names of the reindeer. It's where we got this idea of this jolly old man that comes down the chimney and flies in his sleigh. And Julie Peterson has turned that into a Pride and Prejudice theme where Santa comes and helps Mr. Darcy change his mind about Elizabeth Bennet. Obviously, this does not follow the original Pride and Prejudice plot, but it has super cute illustrations. Um, it's Mr. Darcy and Caroline Bingley. Um, and it has just fun rhymes and I couldn't say no to getting it for our Christmas book collection. And I wish all of you a happy Christmas. <laughs>